Hi there, Simon from SimonWood.com. Six rosés here. Um, let's just dig into them. Uh, where are, how many different countries I've got? I've got Provence, Tuscany, two Rhones, two Chilies. Here we go. First one uh, is uh, Aldi's The Exquisite Collection Côte de Provence Rosé. Has it got a vintage on? No, but I'm anticipating it being 2012. Give it a whirl. Soft, gentle, bit of berry, a little bit of uh, very ripe apple. So slight, you know, sometimes if you let like, apples go, that little bit wrinkly. Got that type of character. It's okay. Um, I would like a little bit more wine in my glass, but uh, one of those where uh, people trot out this line with quite a lot of Provence rosé. Oh, just imagine chilling it and uh, uh, drinking it while you're sitting in Dubai, the Mediterranean. Well, most things probably taste pretty nice in that, uh, in that uh, situation. It's okay. It's not uh, huge in personality. It's got this gentle, uh, slight peach, slight red fruit, but um, not quite enough of it for me. Hey, uh, wine number two, uh, Barone Ricasoli, and this is their Albia 2011 uh, Toscana Rosé. Can't remember what's in here. I imagine that there's uh, uh, quite a bit of Sangiovese, but I wouldn't be surprised knowing these guys whether there's something uh, like Merlot and uh, Cabernet Sauvignon in there too. Now, Merlot and or Cabernet Sauvignon. Whoops, dropped the bottle on the floor. And this smells, well, it, it, I think it's going to be a year older, um, but it smells rounder, richer, softer, more peachy. Um, and it's like peach melba, so there's, it's like the peach, but with a little bit of raspberry sauce, a little bit of uh, red fruit richness in there. Touch of vanilla too. And that's a bigger, bolder wine. A uh, lot more flavour go uh, there. Uh, pretty tasty actually. Um, uh, I like its juiciness. Um, it's got some rosés, they're definitely white wine, some ro uh, rosés are definitely red wines. This one is definitely a pink wine. Uh, so it's got a little bit of that uh, red fruit flavour and a little bit of tannin in there too. Um, but uh, finishes fresh and I'd certainly want to uh, chill it down but not too much otherwise you'll lose some of those rather nice flavours. But I'd be drinking that soon, it just feels um, yeah, it's okay for this summer, 2013, but uh, it won't be lasting too long into the autumn. Uh, next one, I've got two Côte de um, and the first one is 2012 Vidal Fleury Côte de Rhone. Smells quite fresh, this, um, so it's got a little bit of red fruit in there, but it's also got almost something like citrus. I don't, I don't think they've put any Sauvignon or anything in it like there, because uh, yeah, there, there is a touch of rony spice there, but it's more this uh, crisp apple and a bit of citrus and with a little layer of um, raspberry and spice. I like that. That is, that is a really quite a refreshing rosé. Um, so, and you do get that little touch of red fruit and those spice, some sandy, um, herby type of spice there. Uh, but then this touch of red fruit and then those um, crisper apple citrus flavours. Um, fair enough wine. Let's um, try uh, next Côte de Rhone. Uh, from the same stable, Vidal Fleur and Gigal under the same ownership, but this is the Gigal and it's a year older, 2011. Uh, let's give this one a whirl. And this smells softer, richer, peachier. Um, it's strange in, in the way that those that Provence and then the Tuscan one uh, tasted. There was like a crisp one and then a fuller, fleshier one that was a year older. Same thing here. Here it feels more like it's it's more uh, more on that red wine side. That there's uh, more of the cherries and more of the uh, the red fruit, red berries. So um, yeah, there are the raspberries there. A bit of strawberry in there too. Maybe even a touch of vanilla. I don't know whether some of it's been uh, anywhere near any oak of any size, but it uh, feels like it's going to be a fuller, fleshier wine. Uh, maybe the first one is um, the lunchtime one. This is a bit more, uh, oh, it's getting a bit chilly. I'll put my cardi on, and, uh, but I still want a glass of rosé. Anyway, I better taste it. And that's good too. Um, it's um, yeah, it, it, fascinating contrast between those two. I think I prefer the Gigal because it is a fuller, more winey wine. Uh, the uh, the first one is refreshing and a good picnic wine. This one is a bit more serious and uh, uh, let's have some uh, proper nosh and uh, yeah, it would. Uh, it's got the guts to stand up to uh, uh, barbecued food and stuff like that uh, with something with with quite a lot of flavour, uh, but remaining fresh and. Uh, I was talking about tannin on one of the, the ones earlier. Uh, it's, got, it's still got a touch of tannin there. So, uh, nice wine. Wine number five. Uh, Yali, 2012 uh, Merlot Rosé from, where are we, Colchagua? Uh, I'm not sure where we are here. Yeah, Colchagua. Let's give it a whirl. Now, I've just noticed on here, alcohol's only 11.5%, and uh, thinking, 
Uh, Colchagua is quite a warm place, um, but oh, you know, it, it, there are some warm bits and some cool bits. But here, I stick my nose in, and I suspect that there is going to be a touch of sweetness because uh, it comes across uh, a slight vanilla um, summer pudding type of character, and with a little bit of uh, cooked fruit as well as, as well as those fresh berries. Uh, and it's a berries and berry and apple pie, and it's a much more um, drink by itself style of rosé. Uh, I'd say the previous ones had got uh, more freshness, more acidity, a uh, little bit more tannin. Here, uh, extra sugar, extra softness. Um, personally, I prefer the, uh, uh, the, the the Cote de Rhone style. I find this this just a little bit too a uh, little bit too simple. Um, it's it's okay, but um, the flavour I'm left with is just that little bit claggy and. Uh, um, not the freshness and fruit that I perhaps want. Okay, uh, let's see if the final Chilean one can uh, uh, can outdo that. So this is again 2012. This is Torres Santa Dina uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Rosé from Curico. Um, oh, I can't. Uh, it's the Val San Central Valley. Give it a whirl. And this smells uh, more. Well, it's, it's higher alcohol, 11.5%, this is 13.5%. Um, it smells, this smells far more whiny than the previous one. Maybe the previous one was smelt a little bit confected. Uh, here, uh, yes, you're getting the uh, bits of blackcurrant and blackberry uh, cherries, and um, it feels that it's, uh, yes, it's, it's more, this is red wine rosé. Ah, it's funny, I like the smell, but when I come to taste it, it's just verging on that slight medicinal, uh, going into that, uh, what I call the thing of the, ch the classic Chilean blackcurrant pastel, um, and um, it's um, a, there's a touch of spice in there too, uh, but... Um, Yes, it, it's, um, it, it's a funny one. I, I, I liked, I, I'd almost like it with a little bit of the softness of the Yali. I, I, I might be almost tempting to uh, uh, put uh, like 5% of the Yali in here just to, to round out that slight medicinal edge. Um, uh, it's, um, it's, I, I prefer it to the Yali, but it's not my favourite of, uh, of the lineup. I think my favourites are the, I, li I like the, uh, the Ricasle one and the, uh, uh, the two Rones. And of the two Rones, I think the, the Gigal was the, maybe the star of the tasting for me. Hope you enjoyed them. See you soon.